Beautiful. Morena, thank you for being with us. It is 12 minutes to nine. Unfortunately, summer is coming to an end and autumn is here. But the plus side of this is time for some comfort food. And that means dessert. <laughs> yeah. I love it. A great friend of the show, dish editor Sarah Tuck, is with us today with some of her favourite easy desserts, perfect for the cooler weather and even better with Easter just around the corner. This is our Wednesday South, Sarah Duck. Next Monday. Right. So, so don't rush out to buy it right now. But if you haven't got the issue that's on sale now, you should go and get that before it goes off sale. Then this one, next Monday. Yeah. Honestly. And it's, it's got, um, it goes all through kind of, you know, autumn um, dishes. It's got some Italian. It's got Easter weekend away. It's got um, these comfort um, kind of uh, puddings and desserts for over Easter, like the hot cross bun, bread and butter pudding. It also has the spectacular um, Jenny May um, chicken risotto well, crepe. Tell you, it's only spectacular because you yeah. came up with it. <laughs> you came up with the recipe. Um, and we will talk about that shortly, but let's talk about your desserts that you brought along with us, uh, with us for us this morning, Sarah. Cool. What have we got? Well, um, the first one is a hot cross bun, bread and butter pudding. You're joking. Yeah, no, it is one of the best things. You have to buy double the amount of hot cross buns for Easter because you, you're going going to want to make this and um, it is incredibly easy to make all you do is cut hot cross buns in half and put a bit of butter on them and stick them in a bowl then you um, beat um, sugar and cream and milk and eggs and some orange zest um, and a little hit of whiskey and pour it on top and then you stick that bowl in an oven tray which has got some boiling water on the bottom so it's like a little water bath so yeah. <clears throat> it makes the custard set really nicely around it stick it in the oven I mean, it's so easy. How good yeah. is it? How good? How oh, delicious is, is that? Sensational. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one is probably not look, is looking a little bit sad now because it was it was all puffy and glorious this morning at about six o'clock in my it's kitchen. But yeah. It still looks good. So how do you how do you come up with a recipe like that? Well, I think what we usually do is. Um, we, I think um, most recipes, like most things in life, um, ha have got some kind of heritage somewhere along the line. I mean, um, everything is derivative in some way. So for a bread and butter pudding, you know, that's been around for ever and yeah. ever. And, you know, there's things like pain perdu, which was the, you know, French toast, which is soaking bread and, you know, and frying and, it. And the lovely thing about bread and butter pudding, like so much good food, oh. is it's about making cheap ingredients. Uh, carry the dish, right? Yeah. So bread and butter. Yes, exactly. And, and so, and but actually, bread and butter pudding is delicious. Oh, oh, oh so good. Yeah. So good with a little bit of whipped cream or ice cream as well. Uh, at, <laughs> have to go around the camera. Yeah, some. Um, and you know what? Hot cross buns so just, are amazing to do. Yeah. But you can do this, you know, with like just, thick white toast bread is pretty fantastic, and and put marmalade or or you know jam and things on it as well and you can drop different kinds of fruit and things in it this has got sultanas and dark chocolate in it but you can you know mix it up with all sorts of other things i love it yeah all right I'm is that dig in. bread and butter is bread and butter pudding is that an english dish is that yes, if, yeah, yeah yeah well i think there's lots of um different places have got variations yeah. on it you know i'm sure my english grandmother used to make it yeah, along yeah. with yorkshire pudding and stuff mm, yeah oh yeah. yeah hold on yeah hold on, everyone. on uh, <laughs> It's probably a bit sad because it has been sitting around. No, no, but it's not sad. At all. <laughs> it's not sad at all. <laughs> if the National Heart Foundation is, is watching, you may want to go for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. That is so yeah. good. That is so good. I'm and giving even, it a tick. I reckon I could do that. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah. It's mm. so easy. So, what's this one here, Sarah? So, this one, I just did a little variation on the um, cover recipe that we've got this time. Um, because we did a tart which is using ground hazelnuts and fresh figs, but fresh figs are getting harder to get. So we've put a variation in the magazine where you can use um, other fruit as well. So I used Black Doris plums, um, oh, just a tin yes. of Black Doris plums. Yeah, amazing. But one of my favourite things. It's got yeah. such a wonderful nostalgic vibe. It reminds me of my grandmother. Mm. Um, but you can use um, tinned or um, mm. fresh pears that have or pears that have been poached. All sorts of you know different fruit will work with it. So this is ground hazelnuts, and um, basically first off you just um, beat some butter with some brown sugar and some caster sugar and some vanilla and some eggs and an, um, and make a kind of wet mixture. Then you just add in the ground hazelnuts um, and some flour. Put it all together and that's it. That's the base of it. You stick it all in and just bung some plums or figs Bun. or um, pears or whatever on top um, and Ooh, away you go. Yum. Yeah. It's oh, really good. So, and that can be served warm or at room temperature as well. So, uh, so these recipes are in your latest edition? Yes. Um, all of these recipes are in the latest 
edition, but um, Jenny May's Tray Bake is also online right now, so people can go straight to the website and get that one. I want to do a shout out to your website because I'm a, I subscribe to your magazine personally, mm -hmm. and I, but I think you get a lot of value for just going to your website. Yeah, There's absolutely. a lot of good recipes on it, and oh. the lovely thing about dish recipes is a lot of them are very easy to do, yes. and then a lot of them aren't expensive either. No, no, that's right. And I mean, the website, you know, it's such an important um, thing, I think, to be able to just simply share some stuff because I mean that's what the magazine's all about is making you know food really really lovely food that looks great accessible to people and um, you know and showing them how to do it so you know there's a lot of content that's just freely available on yeah. the website and then of course we do keep a, a few ones yeah. that are just exclusively yeah. you know for the magazine as so well. So tell us about this. Oh, the tray bake. Yeah. Um, well, the lovely Alice from uh, our offices uh, interviewed Jenny May. And, um, and I really fell for Alice because she kept asking me all these questions about food, etc. I was going, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Anybody who knows me knows I'm hopeless but, in the kitchen. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, though, that when you read the interview, you, you get uh, you know a sense of who you are and what you like rather than it just being specifically about food. So and as soon as I had chicken as, and family as a kind of things to mm. go on and the fact that you're not a huge fan of spending a lot of time in the kitchen. Not a huge fan of spending a lot of time in the kitchen kitchen but also making sure that when people leave my home yeah. that they feel they're full yeah yeah and you don't walk out the door going oh god mm. is that it yes yeah. it's yeah. really important yeah. um, to me which is why yeah. when I saw this recipe and now that you've brought it in is amazing yeah well it's the kind of thing to feed a crowd you know yeah. you know you don't like I'm the same I don't want anyone to I mean anyone who comes to my house for dinner will tell you the, the same thing they usually say that they can't eat for three days afterwards but um, uh, so this one um, all you do is get the chicken thighs and the chicken drumsticks on the bone because they've got uh, they stay a bit more tender and they've got more flavor and also it's cheap to buy it on the bone it's cheap way cheaper and yep. it's got the fat on too so yep. what you do first is you heat a little bit of oil and then you render some of the fat off the chicken and um, you know give it a bit of uh, you know that golden kind of um, crusty exterior to it um, and then um, you put that to one side and then add just a tiny bit of butter and then you put in leeks and onion and carrots um, and a little bit of garlic um, and you cook that for a little bit this also got thyme but you mm. could use sage or other herbs as well then it sounds weird, but you put in cream and chicken stock Ooh. and seed mustard and a cup of, of risotto rice into the pot and bring it to the boil. Then you just pour it out onto a tray, stick the chicken on top, cover it in tin foil and put it in the oven. And the weird thing is too, when you're doing it, you'll be thinking, oh no, there's something wrong with the recipe because this is, you know, where it looks really wet and you think, well, that's, oh, yeah. hmm, you know, I've read it wrong or it needs more rice, but it, it, the rice just absorbs up all yeah, that moisture yeah. while it cooks. And, yeah. Love it's it. It's so good. I can't wait to try that. You, you do a chicken and leek and chicken pie. I do, so, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a great yeah, combination. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. Sarah, it's always a pleasure to have you uh, come into the studio yeah, and thanks, this won't last very long Good. at all. Sarah, I've got a tour of Dish Magazine. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, Mayo, Tony, my stay with us. We'll